All right, so I'm sat here at the Top Box uh, Gym here in uh, Four Ways at Stephen Castle's gym uh, alongside with Anton Gilmore as well. You guys just completed a great uh, Southern Giants tournament together. Um, let's talk about the Southern Giants firstly. How did the event go for you, Anton? Um, Hayden, it was fantastic. I wanted to do something different this year. It's the version 2.2. Um, we've done the amateurs, pros, white collar, wheelchair boxing, and I was really trying to make something uh, stand out this year. It's the 20 f 21st anniversary of the Southern Giant. And so I wanted to say something special. And Stephen and uh, a couple guys started the Master Box a couple years ago in South Africa. A lot of the guys had passed away over the 21 years, Lionel being one of them. And he was a sponsor of the Southern Giants. So I thought it would be a nice way to memorialize all the guys from the gym. But at the same time, uh, start something new. And that's why it's version 2.2. And so uh, we had the Giant and um, we had white collar boxing. And then to top it off, we had the Master Box, um, let's say, uh, the primary event of the Master Box, you know, the launch. The launch. Mm. And it went fantastically. Let's talk about uh, Master Box as well. It's uh, something that came up about two years ago, I believe, and uh, you announced it on social media. It's now come to fruition. It got launched. Um, your feelings on everything that's occurred? Yeah, it's been, it's been a, a long two years uh, from, from the first time we spoke about it to where we are right now. Um, Anton was a big push to get it going, or to get it launched. He said to me, in, was it July? I said, Steve, I want to do Master Box. Let's launch it at the Giants. It'll be a big thing. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if we'll be ready by then. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that needs to happen. Um, but with insistency from this man, <laughs> uh, when he gets something going, he, he doesn't let, let, leave it. So we managed to get it done in time. We only did three fights on this event. We wanted to do a couple more. We had guys fall out, mm. unfortunately, through, through reasons uh, not to our control. But we had three fights on the ball, and uh, they were great fights. Um, very, very tight. Um, Anton probably had the fight of the night. He fought uh, Grant Habib, and it was a, a great fight. And the crowd went crazy. I mean, it, yeah. uh, uh, it was a really well attended. I mean, I haven't seen a crowd like that in a professional tournament except ESPN and Golden Gloves. Mm. I haven't seen a crowd that big, and this was White Collar Master Box. Uh, so it, it was a great event and great fights. Yeah, we're happy as Master Box. Let's talk about the collaboration between you know, Master Box and White Collar Boxing. I know that this was a collaboration. Is that sort of something you're looking at doing going forward with this particular Master Box? Yeah, look, here, Master Box is very new, and with it being new, we are limited in how many fighters that were registered, how many fighters are available to us. So we can't go and put on full tournaments at the moment where we're talking about 10, 10 or 12 fights. We just don't have the, the numbers yet. I'm hoping that it'll happen after this show and what people have seen, we will get more guys involved. But initially, where we want to grow the sport and do it sort of in a slow way so we, don't, we can fix any issues or problems is we want to collaborate with white-collar promoters out there and then put on Master Box fights um, at the end of all their cards. Uh, two or three fights or even more if, they, we, if we can get the fighters involved just to grow and get those fighters registered and get, get it going. So that is the plan. That's the roadmap for the next sort of 12 months is piggyback on other promotions at the moment in terms of white collars. Uh, and if there's guys out there that want to do full Master Box tournaments and have fighters available that we can register or if we get to that sort of the second half of the year, then we will. So that, that is the aim and that is the goal in order to grow the pool. So let's go back to the Southern Giants really quickly. It is different to many of the other years in, in the fact that you know, professional boxing wasn't there. It's white collar now. Um, how did you feel the change between the two? I enjoyed it. Um, you know, there's a lot of sticky red tape when you do the pros and the amateurs. Um, it's a lot more fluid when you're dealing with people that are keen on making the sport work, you know. And so uh, I enjoyed it. Um, that whole administrative thing that was removed uh, in the amateurs and the pros uh, was a big save. Uh, we worked on this hard since July, and uh, I enjoyed it. I, was, I wanted to prove something to, because I spoke at the national seminar about white collar boxing and how important it is as a feeding scheme into pro boxing, and uh, showing that white collar people can actually box nicely, but at the same time, the LSM of the white collar person brings a higher level of person into boxing, getting interested in, in the white collar boxing, then they'll start to be interested in the trainer that trains them, which might be a professional boxer, and they'll end up supporting him by sponsoring him and being at his tournaments. That's how we get more influx into professional boxing. Uh, we had 700 people at a white collar boxing tournament on Saturday, Sunday, uh, which is unusual, you know, and each person was 
at the value of 200 rand. It's 140,000 rand that was uh, there at the event on the day. So the point was proven. It can happen. We launched the master box fantastically. Um, you know, it's a funny thing about uh, white collar. You can have two beginners that are useless, but if there's enough energy behind the fight, it can be the fight of the day. And um, anyway, I got to prove what I wanted to do, and I'm very happy with the, the result. Uh, so I haven't been called so much post an event. Just people thanking me for allowing them to be on the tournament, especially Johnny Anthony. <laughs> 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 uh, Anton, let's speak about your fights as well because it was a, one of the featured bouts of the evening. Yourself, Grant Sabib, close fights, good fights. Um, what was your thoughts? You know what, eh? um, Grant came with a better game plan than I expected. Uh, I phoned him only a month before the fight. I knew Grant was uh, having a party and what have you. And so I phoned him and he said, yeah, sure, let's do it, you know. And he went and joined the gym down the road, Masangwe, uh, with Jerry. And I had just fought their guy, Lavoya. And they had a game plan. They saw how I fought. And uh, when the fight actually happened, I didn't expect Ron to fight as well as he did. Um, personally, I, was, I would have been happy with the draw. Uh, they gave it to me. That's nice. Um, I, I heard how the scoring went, and it makes sense. Grant was fantastic. Uh, his life has changed since then. Uh, his family have thanked me for giving him a, a new direction in life. And that's what boxing does. It gives you some direction. Uh, he'll be fighting my event on Wednesday at Wildebeers. I do an event once a month at Wildebeers. It's an ongoing contract. We had our first one the other day. We had two weeks to put it together. It was a fantastic success. This one coming up now is Grant versus... Ugh, I can't think of the guy's name right now. But anyway... We, we've got a full card for next week, Wednesday. Things are just ramping up for white collar boxing. And um, yeah, anyway, thanks to Grant for saying yes to the fight because I was without a fighter, you know. I was hoping to fight Asif van Asfeken, who I fought uh, as an amateur, and he's a great boxer down in the, in the, in the Vol area. Um, but he's just trying to get his gym together, so that'll happen in the future. Yeah. All right, and I want to know about the future of Masterbox now since the launch. Uh, what's 2023 looking like? Um, I'm we're hoping for a big year. Uh, we've got to the point now where we're ready to go. As I said, we're, gonna, we're still going to keep it uh, very slow until we find out everything. And I'm 100% I'm happy that we haven't missed anything. But the, the, the aim is obviously to, by the end, of, the end of 2023, I'd like to, us to either be at provincial titles or, or national titles. And if not, having full tournaments by that time with just master box fighters on. That's the goal for the end, by the end of next year. And just for my audience that might not have or, you know, followed your social media and know what Masterbox is, it is a category that is allowing guys of an older age to get, out, get in the ring and box. Could you just maybe just go into that really briefly? So, yeah, it's over 35. Um, it is in 10-year cycles, so 35 to 45, 45 to 55, 55 to 65, and then 65 to 75. And we've, we've had, we, I've already had calls this week from guys in their 60s, and that's, it's going to happen. And James But, so. yeah, James, so. but bear in mind that as the age gets, the, the rounds get shorter. So we look after these guys. These guys are not going to be thrown in the deep end. It's not about hurting. It's about these guys having the opportunity to compete. You're not dead until you're dead. And we're not going to take away that. And I believe that boxing's taken that away from a lot of people for a long, long time. And now we have the opportunity that you can continue to compete in a sport that you love until you can't, when they bury you, basically. So we're allowing that. And that's what Master Box is. And it's, it's professional, well, professional scoring, which is the same as open scoring now, the 10 9. We wear headgear, we wear the bigger gloves, uh, two minute rounds. So it's very similar to the amateur boxing, the open boxing that's that protected. happened. But it's a little bit more protection for the older guys because mm. it's not about getting hurt, it's not about being knocked out, it's about boxing, technically outboxing your opponent. And that's what we're looking for. So I'll talk from an experience uh, perspective. You know, I was on there. I'm 52 years old next week. And I fought a 43-year-old that was in good shape and whatever. Um, and I trained relatively hard. But I was putting this event together. So I couldn't get all my fitness in and whatever. But uh, if you're not, if your muscles and all that jazz aren't work properly and your joints aren't good, you're going to uh, pull in injuries. And so I've got a rib injury, you know and a shoulder injury, and I've done pads for 21 years, and you just throw the wrong right hand and you're gonna hurt yourself. So if you're gonna do this white collar thing, uh, this uh, master box thing, uh, I do recommend that you do several good months of training, getting your body in condition to be ready for this, because it's not play play, you're fighting for a result.
So Anton, you've gone one and zero, undefeated as a master boxer. <laughs> yeah, the legend. Um, yeah, I am, and you know I'll, I'll carry on having a couple. I'm going to be doing three Southern Giants next year, uh, and I've got 15 events planned already, all white collar. So it's going to be a big year for us. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to start to act like I'm a promotion company as opposed to a boxing gym. Um, I'm going to have a couple more fights, probably not on my tournaments because it's just too much to do on my tournament and then fight, you know. Uh, and I'll make somebody else's tournament popular because stick with me, I'll make you famous. <laughs> Joking. What, what about you, Stephen? Do you think you'd uh, get in that ring? No, I'm done now. Please, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Chicken. No, no, I, I, I'm done. I, there's too much work behind the scenes right now for me to, to get back in to do that right now. So, uh, right now, no. But you never say never. Rocky told us that. Huh? Give us a fantasy fight then. Fantasy fight. Mm. Fantasy fight. Who would I like to fantasy fight? Yeah. Oh, God. I know there's a lot of people out there calling me out. There's a lot of those who are calling me out. A couple trainers? Yeah. So one of the trainers out there. Mm. Let's do it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, fantasy made middle of the year. Trainer versus trainer. You know, it's a funny thing about trainer versus trainer. Grant abib has got his own gym in Kibler Park. He's been training guys for many years. He actually was a proficient boxer uh, 20 years ago. I remember watching him. And so you've got a trainer's sphere of influence. All those people that love him, and Grant's got a lot, and they're the money oaks, and they were there in full. They made a lot of noise. Yeah, they made sure. a lot of noise. I mean, they out, out, uh, outdid my guys. And then I've got my sphere. So with that, from a promoter's perspective and money-wise, you're going to have a lot of people at your event. The atmosphere is going to be electric, and he had T-shirts done. He had his shorts made. I mean, they really went all out. Raisa Esop, who actually sponsored the whole event, uh, she walked into my gym three months ago and said, Coach, I want to fight again. What are we going to do? I said, well, let's do a white collar. She said, great, let's do a southern giant white collar. He has 50 grand. Start putting it together, and let's go. And she had the whole garb done. You know, she had her own uh, everything done. Make the efforts, eh? Yeah. They definitely make the efforts. But I think very important, and just... Because we're talking white collar master box, and people are going to start saying that is master box just a, a glorified white collar. Master box is properly run. You know, Anthony mm. will tell you at the end of the white collars, we clear the area, we made sure everything was done the right way. So, and there's, there's all boxes have to do medicals. All boxes have got to be registered. It's a proper process. It's not just white collar. Go for it. You know, yeah. our matchups are, are, are sanctioned. Proper matchups. So, master box is. Hopefully, going to be the over 35 version of what we have now in, in, in amateur boxing. It's not a glorified white collar with winners. It's not what it is, and I want to, that's going to start coming out. People are going to start saying that, but we're not, we're not running away from white collar. I understand the importance of white collar, I understand where it stands. So, we want to be at those events to show the guys that there is another way. You don't have to do white collar, you can come and do master box. I have to clarify something, uh, like from my perspective as well. I think white collar and master box are for the older category person, okay? Especially white collar. There's amateur boxing for the kids and there's a sphere of a ladder that you climb that gives you that esteem that, that want to achieve things. The pro boxing is the same thing. So I had a lot of heat from Sean Moorcroft from the amateurs saying, listen, you're stealing the, the guys from amateur boxing and you're taking them there. I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that it's the 35-plus crowd, the 30-plus crowd, the guys that are retired. I don't want young kids uh, actually doing the white collar. They might bring in a lot of people, and they might only have one or two fights. That's fine. But once they've, if they've had one or two fights, then you want to progress, go to the amateurs. That's it. I really, really from my perspective, I don't want uh, the, the little kids doing this. I actually want the adults to be in it. It's, a, it's, for, it's designed for adults. Yo, I mean, Hayden, we've had this conversation on previous times before where I said that white collar is the social arm of boxing. It's a social, it's your action cricket of cricket. Mm, yeah. We align guys that, that train twice, three times a week that now want to experience what it's like to get in the ring in front of people, their peers, and perform. And that's what white collar does. And yes, they're going to be the guys that are going to go and take the next step and take, but they wouldn't have taken that step if they didn't have that white collar. Mm. They wouldn't have joined an amateur club. They wouldn't have gone straight to pros. They wouldn't have had that if they didn't get the chance and opportunity to do a white collar fight and experience it, enjoy it, because this is a hard game. And not everyone's going to enjoy it. Mm, yeah. But once you know that you enjoy it and you didn't mind that whole vibe, then you're going to go maybe join amateurs, maybe go straight to pro, whatever you can do. But that's the growth. That's what white collar is about. So I wish people would get off white collars back, leave it alone, let it have its day, Maybe BSA should wake up and look at ways of just maybe making sure that it's, it's formalized a little bit better. 
but it's not going anywhere and there's nothing you can do about it because effectively it's, there's no rule that says you can't. Yeah. Mm. So embrace it, nurture it, and let it have its legs where it needs. Mm. That's just the way I feel about it. I think the big thing that uh, a major worry is the security of the guys. If one of the guys gets seriously injured, what's going to happen then? The sport's going to get a black eye and whatever. This happens. It happened in a pro tournament as we were talking on Saturday. Uh, you know, it happens all the time. Thankfully, it hasn't happened in white collar boxing. You're going to get more sprained ankles and pulled muscles than anything else in the Exhaustion. white collar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was me. And, uh, but I think that's the worst that we're going to see of white collar, you know, just a muscle pull and whatever. And it is protected. We are using 16 ounce gloves. There's going to be a stupid thing that happens somewhere along the line. Uh, by the theory of uh, statistics, it will happen, you know. But anyway. For sure. And we do have medics there. We do follow all the protocols that the amateurs and the pros uh, go through. So from a legal perspective, we are legal. Yeah. No, there's nothing more you can really do. Uh, you know, but as I said, it, it, it has its place in boxing. It's been here 12 years now. Is it 12, 10 years, 11 years now. This is the 11th year that I'm, that I'm running White College. And you were the forerunner. So it has its place. Embrace it. Master Box is the next leg of that. A lot of those guys that are doing white collars now are going to move across to, white, to master because they want to have that win. They want that record. They want the mm, opportunity yeah. to compete. So that's going to happen. And you're going to have the guys that are uh, the weekend warrior still mm. doing the, the white collar. And that's cool. Let them do it. Mm. So from a, a master box perspective, is scouting SA and world titles available? That's a big thing. Now, you, you, it gives you an opportunity to go somewhere. To you know? achieve. And so... In, in March next year, and I'm going to preempt this, March next year is my next big giant, okay? I only do one giant a year. Next year, I'm doing three giants. And the next one, uh, after I discuss it with uh, uh, Stephen, we want to do an SA title, possibly heavies or super heavies, and uh, show that the next level. And maybe by the end of the year, we have our first world title. We invite somebody from another country to come fight for the world title in, in South Africa, you know? Um, that's where we want to go. And let's speed this up. And let's get going. 100%. So it can be done as of soon as of maybe by the end of next year. I mean, a world title prob probably just after that, if I'm not mistaken. You have to just sort of get the grassroots uh, SA champions and stuff done first. 100%. Mm. And maybe you never know. Maybe you see Masterbox on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no comments. Um, guys, uh, all the best. Thank you very much for catching up today and obviously informing the public as to what to do. Anton, you got something you want to say? Listen, yeah. Celebrity boxing filled out uh, Sun City. All right. On Casper and your vest. Nobody knew any of the pros that were on the tournament. I can't remember any of them, to be honest. Uh, but everybody knows Casper fought Nuck Music. You know, so that just goes to show how popular it is. And that's in my end statement. I agree with that. I think boxing at the end of the day, as long as we're putting the bums on seats, that's the most important thing right now to rejuvenate our sports and in turn they'll start supporting the professionals, the master boxers and everyone that's going to come with the sports as well. Thank you again gentlemen for, for joining me on SA Boxing Talk. Uh, we'll catch up again soon. Thanks, man. Thank you.